here at Tree of Life. A special warm welcome to any guests and visitors that are here today with us and those of you that are worshiping with us online. We're glad that you were able to make it. Epiphany, the, the season of the church year that we're in now, is about what? Do we remember from last week? What does Epiphany mean? It's a light. It's a revealing, something being made known to us. Today, as we focus on the baptism of Jesus, we'll see that at his baptism, it was made known, it was revealed to the world that he, he was set apart for a specific task, a task uh, set, set apart for the purpose of being the Christ, the Messiah. We're also going to be talking about the significance of baptism and what our baptisms mean for us uh, in, in our lives today and how they have changed us um, and the beautiful blessings that they bring. We're going to be using what's called the Gathering Rite on Holy Baptism uh, to start our service. But before we do that, take a moment to greet those that are going to be worshiping around you this morning. And then after you go to sit back down, make sure you stay standing because we're going to stay standing for that. Time too, okay? so God bless our worship. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Surely we were sinful at birth, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. But we were washed, we were sanctified, we were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God.
As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. My faithful God, you fail me never. Your promise surely will endure. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ faithful in our calling as your children and make us heirs with him of everlasting life. Through your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16. The Lord told his prophet Samuel to anoint David king of all of Israel. On a much grander scale... Jesus was anointed as our heavenly king at his baptism. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then they, he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliam and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 
Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. This is God's Word. We join in singing the hymn, Baptismal Waters Cover Me. lesson is taken from Titus chapter 3 verses 4 through 7. This will serve as the basis for our sermon. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is God's word. We join in singing the verse of the day, Mark chapter 1, verse 11. gospel for this Sunday is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 3. Out of respect for the gospel, please stand. <clears throat> These words, we hear the account of the baptism of our Lord. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of our God. Praise be to you, O Christ. Holy baptism is a precious means of grace by which our Father in heaven connects us with Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. In holy baptism, God takes away our sins and gives new life in Christ our Lord. He creates new sons and daughters. Born again by water and the Spirit, we are made members of the body of Christ. Living in fellowship with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We solemnly renounce the devil and all his works and ways. We confess the gift of faith in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us therefore reaffirm the promises our Lord made to us in our baptism. I ask you, do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? Yes, yes and I ask God to help me. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, yes I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you intend to continue in this faith, to be diligent in the use of word and sacrament, and in faith and action remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as long as you live. Yes, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and the children are invited to come forward for the children's message. We won't start without you. Holy <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. I have kind of a, a weird question to ask you. Did, who, raise your hand if you took a bath last night. I did. I did. I did. I did. Mm -hmm. I took a shower. Took a shower. Took a shower. <laughs> I took a shower. I took a shower. I took a shower. Good. Good. I, I could tell that. I because you guys smell so good. You guys smell like soap. You smell clean. You smell so good. Why do we take baths and showers? So we can get clean. Yeah, because when we're playing, what happens when we're playing outside sometimes? We get dirty. Yeah, you, you look. Let me see your fingernails. Let me see your fingernails. Pretty good. Ooh, pretty. Oh, you now you're showing your fingernails. Good. Good. Yeah, you guys look nice and clean. We we clean our we, we wash ourselves so we can get clean and so we smell good. There was a time when you guys were all very very little that your parents brought you to church and, and you took a bath in a sense they washed you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Baptism. Baptism. 
Have you ever seen when we when we bring a baby up here and we pour a little water on their head? You ever see that? Why do we do that? So we can remember Jesus. So we remember Jesus and what he did. Why do we need to do that? Why why do we need to baptize babies? Forgive their sins. Exactly. Exactly. When we baptize a baby, when we pour that water, and we say the word of God, we wash their sins away. God, the Holy Spirit, washes that baby's sins away. Because babies are sinful too, aren't they? And just like we're all sinful, and we need that forgiveness of sins. So we thank God for that wonderful gift of baptism, which washes away all of our sins, so we get to go to heaven with Jesus someday, okay? So let's fold our hands and let's bow our heads and let's thank God for that gift of baptism. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for giving us the gift of baptism, which forgives our sins and promises us life in, in he heaven with you. Help us always to remember our baptisms uh, today and always. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up here, guys. You can go back to kids' church. You can go back to kids' church. I, I guess. Okay. You can go back to kids' church or go sit down, and we'll continue with our hymn of the day. God's grace, his mercy, and peace be ours in abundance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The words for our consideration this morning are taken from Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 3. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. That night seemed like every other one. The two officers were patrolling the dead, the dead streets. Both of them were new to the force and hadn't really seen a whole lot of action. All of a sudden, the dispatch sergeant yelled over the radio, Shots fired! Shots fired at the corner of Mason and Fifth! 
This was their chance. This was why they joined the force to serve and protect. They flipped the 180 in their car. Their sirens screamed as they ran down the road. When they got to the scene, their tires came to a screeching halt. All of a sudden, their windshields started being peppered with bullets. Someone was shooting at them. Someone was really, really shooting at them. They darted out of their car and, and took cover in a neighboring alley. As they assessed the situation, they noted, we got to get into a better position. He said to his partner, I'm going in. Cover me. She hadn't gotten much sleep lately since their son had been born. Her husband had been working overtime to try and make ends meet. In fact, he was still gone at the office. He had, she had finally gotten the baby to bed when she plopped down on the couch for a quick cat nap before the laundry, before the ditch, dishes, before the cleaning. All of a sudden she heard him that ear-piercing scream of her infant son. She peeled herself off the couch and carried her tired body up the stairs. When she entered the nursery, she saw his arms and legs flailing about. He had kicked off the blanket that she had used to tuck him in. She wasn't quite sure if it was the sleep deprivation or if her infant son was a genius, but she could have swore he was saying, cover me, I'm cold, cover me. He sat at the kitchen table, glaring at the ever-growing stack of bills. About a year ago, he had gotten laid off of his job. Six months after that, he went to the doctor and found some, uh, some troubling news. News that meant he was going to need a lot more medication, a lot more tests, and surgery. But he didn't have the money to pay for this stuff. What was he going to do? With tears in his eyes and, and disgust, he threw his hands up in the air. I need help. Who's going to cover me? Cover me, the officer said to his partner as, he, as bullets were whizzing by. He asked for his protection. Cover me, the infant son screamed out. He was cold. He, he wanted some warmth, some comfort of a blanket. Who's going to cover me? That ill man sat at his kitchen table staring at his bills. Who's going to help me? He needed someone to cover him too. Both in protection, both in comfort, and of course in a third party stepping in. That's what we need as well. Someone to cover us. Only our cover, the cover type of cover that we need, is far more scary than a stack of unpaid bills. It's far more than a, it's chilly than a cold room. It's far more dangerous than staring down the end of a criminal's gun. The type of cover we need is for our sin, the sin that has infected and infested our bodies. In the verse just prior to our lesson this morning, Paul describes to Titus the seriousness and the severity of sin. Listen to what he said to him. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and desires, passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. That cancer of our sin has spread through our entire body and snaked its way into every aspect of our lives. The, the, the genetic defect of our sinful nature has corrupted and corroded our hearts, making us selfish creatures, rabid animals, jealous of anyone and anything that enters our ter territory, hating anything else that we don't like, envious of what we don't have. So I'm going to ask you this morning, how is your corrupted, sin-covered heart shown this past week? About what Paul says, I ask you, were you disobedient to mom and dad? Did you listen to what they had to say or did you shrug it off? 
How did you talk to your wife? Did you use hateful or hurtful words? How did you react when your neighbor pulled into the driveway with his brand new car? Envious, jealous of him? How did you act? Each and every single day, we demonstrate that our hearts are covered with sin through our actions. But as bad as all those things are, as bad as it is to not listen to your parents or, or talk naughty to your wife or, 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 or not work well with your neighbor, as bad as those are, they pale in comparison in what we've done against our God. Because even if I'm pretty good, to my parents, even if I'm a, a nice neighbor, even if I brought home a dozen roses every single day of the week to my wife, that won't cover up the stink of my sin before God. This, because, see, God doesn't demand that I be good some of the time. He doesn't ask that I be good most of the time. God demands perfection and pureness in my heart. Anything less than that is waste. Anything less than that, Scripture tells me, will be burned in those thirsty fires of hell. I'm not perfect, and neither are you. We are covered in our sin, and we deserve to be burned in those flames of hell. So thanks be to God that he covers us. Like that police officer, he steps in and offers us protection. Like that parent offering a warm blanket, he gives us comfort and hope. Like that third party who steps in and helps pay the debt, our God has done that for us with our sin. Paul writes to us this morning, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, God, our Heavenly Father, protects us from sin and the certain death we would face because of it. God, our Heavenly Father, scoops us up in His loving arms and holds us and assures us that we are His dear children. God, our Heavenly Father, removes that debt of sin that we have accumulated through our corrupted life. And why? Well, Paul tells us it's not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. God looked at you and me and he had compassion on us. He showed mercy to us. And it wasn't because, well, I tried to live my life for him. It wasn't because, well, I, I did my best. It wasn't because, well, I'm better than most people. I haven't done anything really bad. It's because of his mercy. It's all because of him, because he chose to love us. So how is it that God gives us that love? How is it that he showers us with these wonderful blessings of forgiveness of sins, of comfort, of hope, of an inheritance of eternal life? Paul tells us that too. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. A few words are spoken. A little water is sprinkled, and our dirty, sin-covered hearts are made clean. Baptism isn't symbolic of the forgiveness of sins that we have in Christ. It is the forgiveness of sins that we have in Christ. Just like, just like one of the girls said in the children's message, it is the forgiveness of sins. It's not just a, a cute tradition or neat ceremony where parents can come up with, with, with smiling face, faces and have an opportunity for a, a family picture. It's more than that. We, we bring our children to the baptismal font because of the blessings uh, of life and, and, and freedom and inheritance in heaven that it promises. We bring our children to be baptized because God offers in baptism protection from the devil and from sin. God offers us comfort and assurance that we are washed clean and made his children. God offers the, the, the promise that our sins are forgiven and we have an inheritance of life eternal. 
we're put into a right relationship with God. We are justified, declared not guilty. And because of that, because we have that promise, Paul tells us, so that having been justified by his grace, God's undeserved love, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. No longer do we sit in the dark or out in the cold. No longer do we sit by ourselves. No longer do we need to worry or wonder what will happen to us if God were to, to end our life here on earth. We have the certain hope and the sure promises of our God that because of our baptisms, God has forgiven our sins and heaven is ours. How is it possible that a little water and a few spoken words can have such a, an, amazing, uh, an amazing thing happen? How, how is that possible? Well, it's because God, the creator of heaven and earth, God who kept all promises that he made to mankind, promises us that it will do so. One pastor once wrote, It is certainly not the, pot, the water that does such things, but God's word which is in and with the water. For without God's word, the water is just plain water and not baptism. But with this word, it is baptism. God's word makes it a washing through which God graciously forgives our sin and grants us rebirth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Most of us probably don't remember our baptisms. Most of our children probably won't either. But our liturgy, our order of service, is sprinkled with subtle reminders of the beautiful blessing that baptism is. When I began the service this morning, I, had, I, said, I said, we begin and we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You saw that sign of the cross. You know the first time that you saw that sign? You know? At your baptism, very good. At your baptism, when pastor marked on your head and your heart the sign of the cross marking you as a child of God. When you see that, you're reminded as you enter this worship, I'm, I'm a child of God here to worship my Father. At the end of the service, when I say, the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Again, the sign of the cross reminding you of baptism, marking you as a child of God. So when you leave this building, when you go to, 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 to take on the daily grind of the week, you can be assured that you're not going at it alone. You have protection. You have comfort and assurance that your God loves you. You have the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins through your baptism. In our baptisms, God shields us from danger. He saves us from the certainty of hell we would face without him. In our baptism, God comforts us and consoles us, reminding us who we are. His loved children bought for him through Christ's blood. In our baptisms, God assures us that we have the forgiveness of sins, won through our Savior's life, death, and resurrection. In our baptisms, we can be assured that that old Adam in us is drowned out daily, and we can live our lives for Christ to his glory. May we continue to remember those blessings of our baptisms each and every day of our lives, knowing for sure that our God loves us that he has forgiven our sins, and that he has given us the promise and sure, certain hope of eternal life in heaven. We sang those words in that hymn earlier, Baptismal Waters Cover Me. I'm just going to read those again. Such a beautiful, beautiful picture of what baptism does for us. Baptismal waters cover me as I approach on bended knee. My Father's mercy here I plead for grievous sins of thought and deed. I look to Christ upon the tree, his body broken there for me. I lay before him all my sin, my darkest secrets from within. Lord, may your wounded hand impart your healing to my broken heart. Your love alone can form in me a heart that serves you joyfully. Baptismal waters cover me. Christ's wounded hand has set me free. 
held in my Father's strong embrace, with joy I praise him for his grace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, walk away here from this morning, this morning's service. Rest assured that you, in fact, are covered. Amen. Please stand. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time in our service, we'll, we have the opportunity to thank God uh, for the free and full forgiveness that we receive through his word and sacrament. Um, and we will do that through our offerings. Before that, the ushers will be handing out the friendship registers, so we ask that you please sign those. And those of you that are worshiping with us online, please be sure to sign our guest book as well. You may be seated. stand for the prayer of the church. Lord Jesus, at your baptism you revealed yourself as the obedient Son of Man, who shared our humanity in every way. Your Heavenly Father revealed you as his beloved Son, in whom he was well pleased. The Holy Spirit revealed you as the Christ, anointed and armed to destroy the work of the devil. We thank you, beloved Son of God, that you took on yourself the nature of a servant, became like us, and were obedient to the will of your heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, eternal word of God, you have connected your mighty word and gracious promises to the water of holy baptism. In baptism, you cleansed us from sin, redeemed us from the oppression of death, and clothed, clothed us in your perfect holiness. We praise you for your treasure of baptism. Encourage us to remember our baptism daily as we die to sin and rise to new life with you. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. At Jesus' baptism, the Father's voice from heaven revealed him as the, his beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, confirming him to be the Christ. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh God, you take away all the sinful words and expression. Let your mercy now we pray, and your peace be our possession. Grant us from our sins. Strength 
heaven and preserve you in the true faith of the life everlasting. Go in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
gives us through this holy supper, we stand and join in the hymn of thanks on page 15. <laughs> creation, a wind from God swept over the waters, and the world was brought to life. At the Jordan, a wind from the wings of God's Spirit swept over the waters, and the baptized Christ was declared the Son of the Father. At our own baptisms, the Holy Spirit's breath swept into our souls, and through water and the Word, we became God's very own. And in our lives, the Spirit still stirs the waters wherever we happen to be. Oceans of God's love surround us when we are frightened or afraid. At times when we sin against God or one another, our days are flooded with God's forgiveness and grace. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated for the singing of the closing hymn. 